Paul are opening for John Reed on Friday. We don't know who's opening for Whitney on Thursday, but it's going to be an awesome time. Um, tickets for the whole weekend should be 49 bucks, but on all the tables, there's one of these little cards and there's a promo code on it. If you buy tickets online and put in that promo code, you get $20 off. So it's four nights for like $29, I think, which is an insanely good deal. So come to one or all the nights, it's going to be a fucking awesome weekend and we need the support to really blow up Richmond Comedy. Um, that said, without further ado, let's bring up your MC for the night, Mr. David Marie Garland!
so you had to be really close to the wall, so it wasn't really that practical of a device at the time. <laughs> but also, about her yelling, on several occasions, the Secret Service would be here yelling from the presidential bedroom and walk in and see the president, they hear yelling, they see the president eating Eleanor's pussy. <laughs> and, you know, it's a tough job, and it's a tough day, if it's your first day, and you're a secret service <laughs> So you're all ready to laugh? Yeah. All right. Y'all ready for your first comic? Yeah. Well, please welcome to the stage a very funny person, Mr. Andrew Pauly. Thank you, Dave. Give it up for Dave, guys. This is going to be fun. <laughs> Yeah, it is, it is. Hey, um, I was thinking the other day, like, uh, do any of you guys, uh, could any of you guys name every fish in the world? No. No. But it's hard, there's a lot of fish, right, and there's a lot of names to memorize. But if you think that's hard, try naming every individual fish in the world. That's even harder. There's a lot to consider, right? Like, you gotta be a good swimmer. <laughs> you gotta be a fast swimmer. You gotta know how to communicate with fish underwater. And let's just say you get the hang of all that, right? At some point, you're gonna start naming sharks. You know? Like, uh, you swim up to a great white, and you're like, hey, you look like a Kevin. <laughs> and he's like, hey, you look like lunch. <laughs> Shark always wins. I uh, had to go to uh, the dentist today because yesterday I went to the sub shop and I ordered a sub sandwich and I chipped a tooth on the periscope. <laughs> I uh, on my computer the other day and I got this pop up and it said uh, low battery you should consider recharging your battery. But I don't have a battery, the computer does. <laughs> like, what you're saying is, please recharge my battery. And maybe you should say it that way. Please recharge my battery. Quit giving the orders, computer. And, uh, I think I can say that better. <laughs> can you guys imagine how crowded the hospitals would be? if it really ever was raining men. <laughs> I like animals, I like animals a lot. Um, the anteater is one of my favorite animals. I love this guy, right? He's got a really long snout and even longer tongue. But I feel bad for the anteater because his whole identity is wrapped up in his diet. <laughs> Like a, a squirrel isn't an acorn eater. A frog isn't a fly eater. A tiger isn't a whatever the hell he wants to eater. Or a Siegfried or Roy or whatever eater. And like, what if it was like that for me? Like, what if I go into a job interview and the guy's looking at my resume and he's like, well, Mr. Pizza Eater, it's here that you speak Italian. You got a cat named Pepperoni. Looks like you're our man. And I'm like, but wait, what about my degree? What about all my training? He's like, that's irrelevant. Because now we know what to get you on your birthday. <laughs> pizza. I like pizza a lot. Uh, I like it so much that um, I want to move to a town in the Eastern time zone that borders the Central time zone. Because I really like free pizza. <laughs> I invite like a whole neighborhood over, we're gonna order like 10 pizzas and call the place across town, you know? The guy will be like, that's 200 and some dollars. I'll say, you guys still got that 30 minutes or less policy, right? I'll say, yeah. I'll say, what time again? I'll say, 8.30. I'll 
And man, the mic clock you're already a half hour late. <laughs> Better get a move on that. <laughs> I woke up this, this morning and I read my horoscope. I'm an Aquarius. It said, uh, beware of questionable advice given to you based on your birthday. <laughs> I just, uh, I've got this new neighbor, his name's Tom. I said, hey Tom, what do you do for a living? He says, I drive a truck. I said, what kind of truck? He says, it's an 18-wheeler. It's out back, do you want to see it? I'm like, yeah, all right. So he takes me around this truck, shows me all around it, and he says, hey, do you want to get up in the cab? I'm like, all right, let's do it. So we get up in the cab, and I start looking around, and I start thinking. I said, uh, hey Tom, what's that thing right in front of you? He said, you mean the steering wheel? I'm like, yeah, the steering wheel. And uh, I said, you just got one of those, right? Just one steering wheel? And he's like, yeah, every car or truck has just one steering wheel. What's your problem, man? I'm like, Tom, 18 plus 1 is 19. This truck is a 19 wheel. <laughs> Friendship is based on trust, Tom. <laughs> you and I are off to a very bad start. It's a very strange thing to lie about. Let's try this again, Tom. What kind of truck do you drive? I drive a 19-wheeler. Are you sure? Are you got any spares I should know about? <laughs> I live here in Richmond. I live in a neighborhood called Oregon Hill. You guys know that neighborhood? Yeah. Anybody, anybody live in Oregon Hill? Woo! So, I know Silver does. That's um, my neighbor. I love it. The only bad thing about it is it's so close to VCU and so close to downtown that sometimes people get lost in my neighborhood and they want directions for free. That's kind of a drag, right? I mean, just a uh, couple stopped their car in front of my house the other day. The lady rolls down the window and she says, do you know how to get to the Landmark Theater? I said, yes, I do. And she said, well, well, can you give us directions? I said, sure. I said, go to the end of the block and take a left. Then take a left on the Belvedere. Then drive to you to see the 7-Eleven. Then pull into the parking lot. And go inside and buy a pack of Marlboros and a lottery ticket. And get back in your car and come back here. Give me the cigarettes and the lottery ticket. And I'll tell you how to get to the landmark here. Quid pro quo. I got this, uh, I got this friend named Terry. Terry's a cool guy, man. Um, but uh, he's not too bright. Like, we, uh, we were hanging out last uh, October, and Halloween's coming up, and we start talking about Halloween. And Terry looks at me and he says, Do you think Halloween's ever fallen on Friday the 13th? <laughs> like, maybe you're dyslexic, Terry. <laughs> maybe that year that Christmas fell on uh, December the 52nd. <laughs> or maybe if you own both Halloween and Friday the 13th on DVD, and you drop them. <laughs> Let's see. Get out of here. Um, I have this girl. I had this girlfriend. I don't have her anymore. You'll know why in a second. Um, I had this girlfriend, and she asked me to go shopping with her. And I didn't want to because I hate shopping. But I went because I like sex. <laughs> and so we um, we go to the store, and she picks out a pair of jeans to try on. And she takes them in the dressing room. She comes back out, and she says, "Be honest with me." Do these make me look fat? And I said, of course not. I said, but lift one knee as high as you can. And she did. And I said, did you hear that ripping sound? <laughs> these jeans are obviously a very poor quality. Why don't we try the next size up and see if they're made any better? <laughs> you guys have been great. Enjoy the show, guys. I do works every fucking time. I've been wanting to do this for a really long time. 
Uh, but I've been busy, you know, with like the Facebook and drama and falling down drunk and stuff like that. So, but I'm glad I'm here because better late than never. Punctuality has never really been my thing. Not my strong suit. Now sucking dick. That is definitely one of my strong suits. Just to let you know. Uh, obviously, uh, Facebook for me is like a full-time job. I mean, I don't know about the rest of you guys, but I wake up at like 11.30 and I'm like, holy shit, I'm late for Facebook. Gotta go get my coffee. Gotta go see how many notifications I've got going on. Woo! Got a long day ahead of me. Guess not. Anyway, that's how it is for me. I actually had a Facebook date that was set up from like a common friend. And the guy was like, you know, this is a you know good guy, a okay, and I'm like, all right, cool. So the guys are more messing each other, messing with each other, you know, finding out, you know, if we get along. Oh, you're funny, I'm funny. Okay, ha ha ha. We'll go on a date. So the first date he asked me on was like a lunch date, and it was like at 12:30. I'm like, dude, I'm still drinking coffee. I'm in my nightgown. No. So the next date he asked me on was like a, a three o'clock movie date. So I'm like, dude, I'm still drinking coffee. It's like I have my nightgown on. <laughs> so finally we get around to the dinner date. I'm like, cool, you know, get all fancied up. We go out, we dinner, drinks, things were going really good, and witty banter and all that mess. And I'm uh, playing footsie underneath the table. And he's like holding my hand by the end of the thing. And I'm like, okay, now I've got something going on. So he's like, God, your lips are so luscious. I can't wait to kiss them. So obviously, as soon as we're out the door, he's like, and then back in his car, and then he drops me off at my house, or so I thought, and more blah, 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 blah. And I made the mistake of accepting the invite back to his house. I did. I'll never learn. So we go back there and it's basically like heavy petting with lots of dirty talk. And I'm like, cool, we got the free connection going on. And he was talking a good game too. He's like, I can't wait to stick my big rock on your neck. I'm like, I love it in a And you know, it was cool. So after all that, he dropped me off after I let him come on my tits. And I thought everything was cool. I thought, you know, definitely second date was common, third date, whatever. So I get this Facebook message from him the next day, and he's like, Jenny, I gotta tell you, I had a great time last night, but you're a little too wild for me. A little too wild. Couldn't you have told that from my Facebook page, where I talk about being a crazy, pill-popping, bisexual drunk? I mean, couldn't you have fucking figured that out first? Really? What the hell? <laughs> dinner and drinks again. And I'm like, yeah, that's okay. I don't usually exchange hand jobs for tuna entrees with my friends. <laughs> that's it. Thank you. Jeez, Jenny, I thought this was a family show. <laughs>
So there's like this amazing burden to have to tell the story of everyone around you. And I would, like, if I was in that position, I would be like, oh, he was a great guy, and she was a great girl, and everyone was very brave. Unless, of course, they were a douchebag. I would ruin their reputation. <laughs> oh, yeah, that guy, he was a fucking dick. We started going down, he was kicking babies, stealing life vests from everybody. We were all trying to have a prayer circle. He's carving 666 in his chest and speaking in tongues. Yeah, I don't know where I'm going with that. One day. I'll leave you guys with this. Uh, have you ever seen those uh, memory foam mattresses? Those things are amazing to sleep on. You know, until you get kicked out of the store. 
<laughs> but uh, I can't imagine trying to have sex on it as a fat guy. Have you guys seen those commercials? Like the woman's on the bed, she's got the wine glass sitting on it, and she's jumping up and down, but the wine glass doesn't move. That doesn't work for me. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm fairly wild. <laughs> I need some recoil action. Like, this is what I would look like having sex on a Tempur-Pedic mattress. Thrust. <laughs> Why do we stop? <laughs> I have to wrestle my way back. <laughs> Thrust. Really? Again? <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> like not sexually, I'm physically spent. I'm exhausted. <laughs> I need something with a little bit of spring, some recoil. I need something that's gonna push me back up. So my weight and gravity can push me back down. Back up. Back down. I'm like a perpetual motion sex machine. So how about it, ladies? Who wants to come back to my place tonight and solve the energy crisis? In bed. Hey guys, that's my time. Are fucking amazing. 
I love the homeless people of Richmond. I'm coming out of fucking uh, sticky rice one night, and this dude walks up to me. And, hey, we got a true story. He walks up to me and says, hey. <laughs> hey! You can't get Twinkies in there. <laughs> you can't get Twinkies in there. And Obama, he doesn't give a shit. <laughs> and then he just left. <laughs> like, I would have given you a dollar just for that. Man. That was fucking awesome. Uh, but Richmond is cool. I do like living in Richmond. Uh, I like living in Richmond because we have a street with the guys who lost. That's one, that's one bonus. Anybody ever been to one of those Civil War reenactments here? They're fun. You should go because you two can say, yes, I wasted an entire afternoon of my life going to one of these things. Listen, uh, if you're part of a Civil War reenactment, no matter how many times you fight the battle again, the colored folk will still be able to vote. Get the fuck over it. <laughs> one of my favorite things, uh, they got these headphones. You can like listen to letters that Civil War people wrote home. One of them was great. It's like, bigger game of battle. Tonight, the bullets was whistling past my head. And it reminded me of you, whistling Dixie between that gap and your two front teeth. <laughs> Love always, Jeb. P.S. Send legs. <laughs> See, it's funny because he's crippled. Anyway. <laughs> was that on the lines? Okay, let's try this one. If Michael J. Fox was in an earthquake, do you think he could tell? Anyway, moving on. <laughs> It's funny because he's gonna die. Anyway, <laughs> I just made it creepy. Just made it creepy. That's what. That's why I like it. Ooh, good times. Good times. I'm gonna get out of here real quick, folks. But I did talk about the drug use. Uh, I don't do drugs anymore because I'm old, and college isn't for everyone. Let's be honest. Uh, speaking of college, where are my college students in here? College students, PCU. Uh, did you have a good day standing in the middle of Main Street for no fucking reason whatsoever? <laughs> I'm serious, man. I turn off a boulevard, a velvety on the Main Street. There's just a bunch of art students. Just, hey, we can stand here and fuck we want to. <laughs> Our parents paid for this shit. We can just stand here. You will drive around me. I'm going to get on my Vespa later and just piss everyone else off. <laughs> First and foremost, you're not cool if you're driving. You're on a fucking hair dryer. Fuck off! <laughs> uh, but I will leave you with this fine, folks. Uh, if you're in a relationship tonight, be good to that person, be great, because they'll buy a removable shower head real quickly. You let, you got the little blondes in the front row, and it's like, oh my god, what are we talking about? Go back to talking about being fat and stuff, that was working out well. I know you got them. Everyone, if your girlfriend buys a removable shower head, you better start reading the Kama Sutra or something, because you're not doing something right. She goes in there to bathe, she sounds like the fucking cowardly lion from the Wizard of Oz. Just be, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you've been drinking tonight, let somebody else drive. You plan on doing other things tonight. Don't fuck up. Fuck safe. See you next time. Bye. Put it, your hands together again for Red One. And do I think I hear a love connection between Ray and Jenny? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know love is, sir. <laughs> <laughs>